So next topic of conversation is going to be parameterizing space curves. So space curves are generally given as an intersection of two different surfaces. When you intersect a surface with another surface, uh, chances are pretty good you're going to wind up with something that is one-dimensional. So when it comes to parameterizing space curves, please know that there is no fixed set of rules. It's usually a matter of taking a look at what you have in the particular case that you have. Um, one big thing to do is to avoid taking square roots. Big reason for that is when it comes to square roots, you wind up with plus or minus a square root. And now all of a sudden you have to do multiple parameterizations for one curve. So if you do see things that do involve squares, either make it a point to never solve for something that was squared or take a look for patterns like if you see a square plus a square that's usually indicative of a Pythagorean identity that you could be using. Uh, another one is if possible start where you see only two variables parameterizing something where you only have two variables. We did that back in Calc 2, and uh, therefore it'll, it should be a little bit easier. So uh, these are guidelines, most definitely not rules. So for our first example, I'd like to parameterize the intersection of a couple of cylinders. These are both parabolic cylinders. We have x equals z squared, and we have the cylinder z equals y squared. Now, generally, when you have one variable as a function of the other variable, you let whatever that uh, independent variable is be what your parameter is. What I'd like to point out, though, is that if I were to solve for z in this case over here, I would need to take a square root of x, and that is what I said to explicitly avoid. So rather than that, what we're going to do is observe that x is a function of z, and that z is a function of y. So what I'm going to do is allow y to be my parameter be the parameter. So we'll let y be equal to t. Then when I plug in t to the given parameterization, that lets me know that z is going to be equal to t squared. No problem there. Then I can take what I just got for z and plug it in here. We would wind up with x is equal to t squared, squared, and that would be t raised to the fourth power. Now this would be the parametric form of it. If we wanted to write this as a vector function for our space curve, we could say x is t to the fourth, y is t, and z, oops, z is t squared. I guess that's what you get when you're um, talking while writing. I'll try that one more time. Also, there's no restriction on t, so we'll just go ahead and say that t can be any real number. <clears throat> That'll allow y to range through all real numbers, and x and z will both be positive values. Let's try out another one. <clears throat> Just kidding, another two. So next up, I'd like to parameterize the intersection of the cylinder, x squared plus z squared is equal to four, and the, uh, I guess this would be a hyperbolic paraboloid, y equals x squared minus z squared. Now. This one has three variables, this one has only two variables, so I'd like to start over here. I want to point out that if I solve for x or solve for z in this case, I am going to wind up taking a square root, and that's something that I want to avoid. However, I do see the cross sections are circles. Parameterizing a circle usually involves a sine or a cosine. Now, technically, it shouldn't matter which one is which, but I do want to make sure that they're equal to the radius of the circle times the sine or the cosine. So do bear in mind, parameterizations are not unique. I'm going to let x be the cosine, so we'll say 2 times the cosine of t, and we'll let z be 2 times the sine of t. So really, I guess what I did there was a conversion into polar, where I let one of the variables be equal to r times the cosine of your variable, and the uh, r times the sine of the variable. Variable in this case is going to be t, that's our parameter, and the radius of this circle is 4, which is why I use r equals 2. I'm going to take both of these and plug them into this identity. That's going to be y is equal to 2 times the cosine of t, quantity squared, minus 2 times the sine of t, 
quantity squared. Simplifying each of these, we'll get y is equal to 4 cosine squared t minus 4 sine squared t. Now it's not necessary to do so, but if you do factor out a 4, there is a double, uh, double angle identity that you can use with this. Again, that part is completely optional. You don't have to use it. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner when you express it in that form. So now, parameterization as a vector function. X is going to be equal to 2 times the cosine of t. Y is 4 times the cosine of 2t. And z is equal to 2 times the sine of t. If we wanted to throw a domain restriction on t, we could do one full rotation of the unit circle and simply say that t is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. It's not 100% necessary to have that restriction on here, but that will sweep out the entirety of the space curve. For our last example, we're going to take the intersection of the right circular cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 1, and the plane, x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 6. So generally, when you intersect a circle with a plane, you're going to wind up with either a circle, if the uh, plane is orthogonal to the rulings of the cylinder, or you're going to wind up with an ellipse. Both of those are possibilities. Think of um, taking like a, a paper towel uh, tube, one of those cardboard tubes in the middle, and slicing it at an angle. The cross section that you would get would be a, uh, an ellipse. Now I'm going to do the same thing as what I did for the last one and start right here and say that I'm going to express x and y in terms of the sine and the cosine. Once again, it's kind of arbitrary which one is which, but since we're used to seeing it this way, we'll let x be the cosine of t, we'll let y be the sine of t. Radius of the circle in this case is 1, which is why there's no coefficient listed in front of those. Now that we have x and y parameterized, if I plug both of those parameterizations into this formula, the only variable left is going to be z. So then I can solve for z right after. Or just go ahead and do it now. So this is 6 minus x minus 2y all over 3. You're welcome to simplify that if you care to do so. And you know what? I do care to do so. 6 over 3 is 2 minus 1 third of x. The parameterization that we have for x is the cosine of t. And then minus 2 thirds times y. The parameterization that we have for y is 2 thirds sine of t. So like we did for the last one, <clears throat> we're going to throw a domain restriction on t. We'll call this one cosine of t, comma, sine of t, and then the equation of our plane with these two parameterizations plugged in. So try some of these parameterizations out for yourself. Please know that answers are not unique. If you and a friend are both working on this and you come up with different parameterizations, no big deal. It happens all the time. You can both be right.